So is the GTR 1400 any good by today's standard of motorcycles? At the end of the day, this bike has, it's got ABS, that is it. It's got no traction control, it's got no rider aids. It is just a motorcycle with your throttle. And that is it, you are in control of the power of this bike. So it's all basic, it's a basic, basic bike. So maybe that makes it slightly boring because you look at all other bikes, they've got different displays, they've got all this fancy equipment on them, but the GTR doesn't. The GTR is literally bike person. That is it. But I think this bike can still punch very high for a 17 year old bike now. This bike is 17 years old. It's done 19,000 miles. It is still being run in as far as I'm concerned. Um, when I bought it, it had literally two and a half thousand miles on it. But it is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It's taken me to Slovenia, from the United Kingdom to Slovenia over a couple of days. It doesn't make me tired. It just makes me want to keep riding this bike. The only fatigue I have through riding this bike is just general fatigue. You're on a bike for long hours, but the way the bike is set up, what on earth are they doing there? Literally the other side of the road and fell asleep. Um, the way the bike is set up is it's set up perfectly for touring because you've got an electric windscreen. You can pop it up when it gets a bit windy, when it gets a bit wet, you can deflect the rain off you. You can lower it down when you want a bit more airflow. And at the moment in Slovenia, I definitely need airflow because it is a hot one. Uh, the fairings, they give you amazing wind protection, amazing protection from the elements. However, the negative of that is that it stifles you through giving you so much protection. So at the moment, I've got my Merlin mesh trousers on, and because I've got these on, I'm trying to get airflow. If I stick my leg out like that, I can get some really good airflow. However, sit back behind the GTR's fairings, and I've got no airflow. So that's, that's a bit of an, an annoyance. However, when you get shifting, the GTR comes into its own. It really does start moving and it is a beautiful bike. It's got power to keep up with bikes of today's standards. It's got 154 brake horsepower, I believe, and you're running in at around about 2.9 seconds, 0 to 60 miles per hour, which is very good. The brakes, by today's standards, they're, they're perfect. I mean, change them from standard brakes because the standard GTR brakes are horrific. They can't cope with the power and the weight of the bike. They will warp. Oh, this is really good. So we're on some hairpins and it actually counts you down. So this is hairpin number 49 out of 50. This is fantastic. And here we go. This is the start of something special. <laughs> but the GTR, yeah, I mean, it can flick over nicely, it can handle nicely. 17 years old, it doesn't feel like it. I think looks wise as well, it still looks like a modern motorcycle. Still handle very well. It's a heavy bike. Touring bikes tend to be very heavy, so they're sturdy on long runs. And this is no different. This is nearly 300 kilograms of pure brute of a bike. But once you get it moving, that weight just disappears. The rear brake isn't, isn't as good as you'd want it. The front brake though, yeah, they, they are very good. Those twin discs at the front. Hairpin number 46. Coming round. It is a very, very maneuverable, uh, maneuverable bike. Airplane number 45. This is brilliant that they're actually counting you down. So for a bike that is old, it can still handle. What a machine. So if you're considering the GTR as a cheap second-hand bike, I would. 
I do not have any regrets over this bike. You can throw your luggage on it. You can go touring around the world on it. You can meet some amazing roads like this and smash out some twists, some bends. Balance the bike on that rear. Double hairpin there. Bring it round. Oh, this is actually quite tiring. Up into hairpin number 41. Keep going. It is hard work with this heat and the helmet down so you can still hear me. I've got to say, I think this, this road here beats Top Gear's best road in the world. You've got the Slovenian, or Slovakian, Slovakia, Slovenia, Slovenian mountain range. Ooh, she went into neutral then, didn't get into first gear properly. I think for a motorcycle that is, This is one of the best roads I've ever ridden on a motorcycle. Some amazing views. Technical turns. Just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. And this girl is not missing a beat. She is doing very well. Hairpin number 38. Hairpin 38. Here we go. And we're stopping at the red light. Whew. That was hard work. That was good fun. I like it.